So like I said, we're just gonna wash in some, grab some more yellow, really light green first. So you can always paint the darker on top of the light, but you can't do the opposite with watercolor. I'm just gonna really kind of put in some light greens in here. We really are just gonna paint this really fast and loose. And we're not going for realism here. We're going for uh, expressionism. You know, expressionism is how you express the movement, the, 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 the feeling of the painting. I am not going for perfection. I'm going to keep adding a little bit more bright yellows in here in some areas, just like this. And then go in and add some darker greens that you've mixed up. Darker and medium greens. You see, I'm just kind of moving this paint around. And grab some Prussian blue. Look at that, it just makes a nice darker color. And grab some burnt umber. It tones down the brightness of that. You see how I'm just kind of just bleeding in a little bit of the dark, mixed in with the light. As you look in the photograph, kind of squint your eyes, you can see like a dark part here, but you don't have to make it perfect, like I said. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going for a loose kind of atmospheric look. You know, you know what it is, but it isn't like so obvious. You know, you know it's an ocean scene. And here I'm going to go back in and add some of the bright greens and yellows. Just kind of just pushing that color in all around. <laughs> See? Get some bright greens and some dark ones mixed in with some brown. It's going to give it that loose, beachy look. So I'm fixing some burnt umber, I'm throwing in some Prussian blue right on there. So you can see how that wet on wet, <clears throat> excuse me, and dark. See how I'm just kind of pushing it around like this. So I'm putting in some dark burnt umber and I'm grabbing some Prussian blue. Don't forget, we have all those light colors, right? And you can add some yellow, brown, these areas. I also have this nice color. It's a yellow ochre color right here. This is also another thing to have that's pretty. And you can just kind of push that in here too, because don't forget, there's got a lot of these tan colors in here. Some of these yellow ochre going in here. It's good to step back. Now I'm sitting down in my chair and if I stand up, I can squint better to see and I can look through my camera and see what I'm looking at here. Kind of like what I'm seeing, you know, but this was pretty fast, right? Go back in here and add a few more dark tones as it's drying. Kind of want to take a concentrated color. Go make this green. There we go. I like using a big brush when you're doing stuff like this because you're looser. When you're using a smaller brush, you're tighter. You're not getting that loose look. If you're having difficulty creating loose paintings, I'm telling you, use a bigger brush and stand up. <laughs> that is my advice. I'm sitting down for just uh, filming purposes, but every now and then I get up. And you know, if I, if you've ever seen me do some live paintings, um, I talk about this, I paint stand up a lot. And I'm gonna go back in and grab some yellow. I don't want it so dark. Maybe some brighter yellow. Put some red in there. See, so putting yellow on top of the paint. This got really muddy, so I'm gonna remove this paint color. My peacock blue and my yellow. There's that pretty green. You want a mixture of greens in here. Hey, listen, don't get freaked out if it's not coming out the way you want. Just practice, practice, practice. We are not all perfect. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave that for now. I think it's got what I wanted. Oh, my coloring. There we go. Um, now, I think I'll work on the 
uh, the cliffs. So obviously they're beigey brown color. You've got the burnt umber, but I also have this yellow ochre, which is kind of perfect, right? Water it down a little, get this green out of here. Goodbye, green. <laughs> got this pretty yellow ochre. I might make some a little bit of paints gray with that. Really loose water. It will make it lighter. You can tap it on your paper towel if it's too excessive and just kind of wash in this kind of tan color. Now I'm looking at my pain, my photograph and I'm seeing it's more of like some red colors in here. So I'm just gonna put this light color in first. Just washing in the cliffs color. And then I'll go back in and add some more of that burnt umber because it's had a red tone to it. The burnt umber. So I'm just going to wash in some of that right there. A little bit down in here. Still using this big old brush. Washing in. Might grab a little gray. Just put some gray tones and some washing, like orangey yellow, to, oh, excuse me, brownish red tones. It's kind of like the picture, but not really. I mean, I'm doing some artistic liberty. I'm adding in some darker tones in certain areas. I'm playing around with it. And of course, I'll stand up and see if I like it. Not bad. I'll go back and grab some paints gray and some of this dark brown here. Really concentrated right in there which means minimal water. So it's really dark. Just put a few of those marks kind of up here, around and down here. And then grab some of that green, darker green. So you get the idea, it's cliffs. You know, doesn't have to be perfect. See, look at that, there's nothing special about that. So we'll stop with that. Now let's go back to the ocean. Now the ocean is more of like a cobalt, cobalt blue kind of tone. But again, you could make it a little bit darker. I mean, it's a bright day. I'm just, I put phthalo blue over here, but I'm removing it because it's so intense. It's like the most intense blue. I don't even know why I stuck that there. I thought it'd be kind of fun to add some brighter blue, but I'm removing it. Very bad blue. <laughs> Putting them into the corner. I mean, I'll stick with the peacock. So I was ultramarine, and I'll mix my Verdier blue. It's kind of like a cobalt blue. And you mix the two. If you have cobalt blue, then you're perfect. And I'm using the big old brush still. I'm getting this really wet. See that? I'm going to tap on my paper towel, and I'm going to start just painting that color in. If you go like sideways or horizontal, you can use it like this dry brush but sideways so you can leave some white areas like white caps of the ocean you don't have to completely fill it in blue especially around by the cliffs because there will be some white areas like you know the waves crashing to the shore not so much out here And we don't, have, we don't have that much of the ocean in this picture. So there, just like that. And a little bit back out here. Again, I'm still using this big old brush. That. Now it seems so flat to me. So I'm gonna go and add a little more ultramarine. Right, less water, maybe a little paint gray to that too. So a little bit darker. This is where you take the artistic liberty, adding on some darker tones. I just felt like it was so flat. And it's a fairly good color. I might um, 
go in and add, say, take that peacock blue. So it's like a turquoise and add some of that kind of down in here. Lift up some of that paint. Just get a little lighter on Buttercliffs. So I lift up the brush and tap it on the paper towel. Okay, going a little bit lighter. Just like I'm doing here. All right, pretty simple, right? So we're gonna let all this dry and then we're gonna remove the um, masking fluid and see what we got. 